Welcome to our exploration of Old Slavic mythology. We'll examine the pantheon of gods, their roles, and their impact on ancient beliefs. This journey will reveal the intricate cosmology that shaped the worldview of early Slavic cultures. The divine hierarchy in Slavic tradition reflects societal structures, with powerful entities governing the cosmos and lesser spirits influencing daily life. Deities often embody both natural phenomena and human qualities. The relationships between these beings illustrate complex cultural concepts, such as the ongoing struggle between order and chaos, represented by conflicts between certain gods. This hierarchical structure bears similarities to other Indo-European mythologies, particularly the Norse and Baltic traditions, yet maintains distinct Slavic characteristics. For instance, the Slavic focus on household spirits differs from the more individualistic deities of Greek mythology. In contrast to the Olympian pantheon, Slavic household spirits like the Domovoi played a central role in daily life, reflecting a more intimate connection between the divine and the domestic realm. Archaeological evidence from sites like Arcona on the island of Rügen, dating to the 9th to 12th centuries CE, provides tangible proof of elaborate Slavic religious practices, including temples and ritual objects dedicated to major deities. Excavations at Arcona have unearthed intricate wooden idols and ritual vessels, offering insights into the material culture associated with Slavic worship. At the pinnacle of Slavic mythology stands Rod, the divine architect who forged existence from primordial chaos. His name, derived from the Proto-Slavic Rodu, meaning lineage or birth, embodies the belief in a meticulously constructed universe. Rod's role as a creator deity shares similarities with figures like the Greek Chaos or the Norse Ymir, yet his continued involvement in maintaining cosmic balance is distinctly Slavic. Unlike the distant creator gods of some traditions, Rod remains actively engaged in the world's ongoing creation and maintenance. This multifaceted deity's significance is evident in concepts of fertility and continuity that permeated Slavic society, influencing agricultural practices and family structures. In Old Russian, the term Rozhenitsi referred to female deities associated with childbirth and fate, linguistically linking them to Rod's creative force. Modern Russian still uses the word Rod to mean family or kin, demonstrating the enduring linguistic legacy of this primordial concept. Similarly, in Polish, Rodzina means family, further illustrating the pervasive influence of Rod's concept across Slavic languages. Among the most prominent figures in the pantheon is Perun, associated with thunder and justice. His name, derived from the Proto-Slavic Perunu meaning to strike, reflects his dominion over sky and lightning. As a guardian of cosmic equilibrium, Perun's influence extended to legal systems and societal norms. His warrior aspect made him a patron of rulers and soldiers, shaping military traditions. The annual festival of Perun's day, celebrated with bonfires and the sacrifice of animals, demonstrated his importance in Slavic cultural practices. These rituals often involved the burning of oak logs, symbolizing Perun's connection to this sacred tree. Participants would leap over the flames, believing this act purified them and ensured Perun's protection. In the 10th century, Prince Vladimir I of Kiev placed a statue of Perun atop a hill, highlighting the god's prominence. Perun's role as a thunder god parallels Zeus in Greek mythology and Thor in Norse tradition, though his judicial aspect is more pronounced in Slavic lore, in modern Slavic languages, his name persists in words related to thunder, such as the Polish Piorun and the Czech Perun. The Serbian phrase Gromaj Pakao invokes Perun's power in modern colloquial speech. Veles, Perun's adversary, embodies the mysteries of the underworld and governs water, earth, and magic. This complex figure represents nature's cyclical changes, initiating the drama of seasons by challenging Perun's dominion. Veles's multifaceted nature extends to wisdom, wealth, and artistry, making him a pivotal character in Slavic lore. His name, possibly related to the Proto-Indo-European root well, meaning to see, reflects his role as a seer and guardian of hidden knowledge. In Czech and Slovak, Veles still means devil, showcasing the linguistic evolution of this deity's perception. 
The conflict between Perun and Veles is often depicted in Slavic folk tales, symbolizing the eternal struggle between celestial and chthonic forces, reminiscent of the conflict between Zeus and Typhon in Greek mythology, yet with distinct Slavic interpretations. Unlike the Greek tradition, where such conflicts often result in permanent defeat, the Slavic cycle emphasizes a continuous necessary balance between opposing forces. Archaeological findings at Novgorod, including amulets and inscriptions, provide tangible evidence of Veles's worship in ancient Slavic communities. Central to Slavic cosmology is the concept of the world tree connecting celestial, terrestrial, and chthonic realms. This colossal oak, known as Dub in various Slavic languages, embodies universal structure with various entities residing at different levels. The upper branches house celestial beings, the trunk is home to earthly spirits, and the roots harbor underworld forces. This concept shares similarities with Yggdrasil in Norse mythology, yet the Slavic world tree has unique associations with ancestral spirits and the cycle of rebirth. In Polish folklore, the phrase Dab Bartek refers to an ancient oak tree, linguistically connecting the concept of the world tree to real-world landmarks. Representations of the world tree are found in traditional Slavic textiles and wood carvings, often featuring intricate patterns symbolizing the interconnectedness of all realms. Rituals associated with the world tree often involved circling sacred oaks or leaving offerings at their base, practices that continued in some rural areas well into the Christian era. The Russian term Mirovoi Drevo in folklore studies directly references this ancient concept, demonstrating its enduring cultural significance. The divine couple Jarilo and Morana personify nature's rhythm through their relationship. Their union heralds spring's vitality, while their separation brings winter's dormancy. This cyclical narrative mirrors agricultural patterns crucial to Slavic communities. Jarilo, associated with youth and growth, contrasts Marana's connection to aging and decline. Their story profoundly influenced festivals and rituals, such as the Spring Festival of Jare, celebrating Jarilo's return from the underworld, embodying the eternal cycle of renewal in both natural and cultural spheres. In Croatia, the term Jurjevo still refers to St. George's Day celebrations, preserving linguistic echoes of Jarilo's Spring Festival. The celebration of Jari often involved the crafting of straw effigies, symbolizing the rebirth of vegetation, a practice documented in rural Slavic communities well into the 19th century. These effigies were often adorned with flowers and paraded through villages before being ritually destroyed, representing the death of winter and the rebirth of spring. The Czech phrase, Schmert nesem zevisi, we carry death from the village, used in spring rituals, reflects the symbolic expulsion of winter associated with Marana. In Slavic households, the domovoi played a crucial role as guardian of the hearth. These domestic spirits, whose name derives from the Slavic word dom, meaning home, protected families and ensured prosperity when properly respected. Specific rituals, such as offering food in quiet corners, maintained harmony between humans and these otherworldly inhabitants. The concept of household spirits is prevalent in many European mythologies, but the Domovoi's specific characteristics and rituals are uniquely Slavic. In Russian, the phrase kak u krista zapazukoi is used to describe a safe, comfortable environment, echoing the protective role of the Domovoi. Some Slavic communities continue to honor the Domovoi by leaving small offerings in traditional house corners, maintaining a connection to ancient beliefs. These offerings often include bread, salt, or milk, placed in a special dish reserved for this purpose. The practice of inviting the domovoi to a new home during house-moving rituals persists in some rural areas, illustrating the enduring nature of these beliefs. In Polish, the term skrzat domowi preserves the concept of a domestic guardian spirit in modern language. Beyond the threshold of human dwellings, a variety of entities populated the wilderness. Forest guardians known as Leshi were believed to shapeshift and protect animals, punishing those who disrespected their domain. In bodies of water, enchanting yet dangerous female spirits called Rusalki were said to lure unsuspecting victims. These mythical beings, whose names often have cognates in various Slavic languages, embodied the reverence and caution with which Slavic peoples approached the untamed landscapes around them. 
In Serbian, the term Sumska Vila preserves the concept of woodland spirits in modern language. Folk tales featuring these entities often served as cautionary stories, emphasizing the importance of respecting nature and its mysteries, a theme found in many cultures but expressed through distinctly Slavic characters and settings. Rituals to appease these spirits included leaving offerings at the edge of forests or near bodies of water, practices that some rural communities maintained well into the modern era. The Bulgarian phrase Gorska Maika reflects the enduring concept of a protective forest spirit in Slavic folklore. As Christianity spread through Slavic regions, a process of religious blending occurred. Ancient beliefs merged with new doctrines, allowing for a gradual transition while preserving cultural continuity. For instance, some attributes of Perun were absorbed into the figure of St. Elias, with Christian art often depicting the saint with symbols reminiscent of the thunder god. The Slavic goddess Mokosh found parallels with the Virgin Mary, demonstrating how pre-Christian deities were reinterpreted within the new religious framework. This syncretic approach is evident in many Slavic churches, where Christian imagery often incorporates elements of pre-Christian symbolism. In Bulgaria, the phrase Sveta Petka refers to a Christian saint who absorbed many attributes of Mokosh, showcasing the linguistic preservation of ancient beliefs within a Christian context. The practice of leaving offerings at sacred springs or trees, once associated with pagan deities, was often reframed as devotion to Christian saints, illustrating the complex interweaving of old and new religious traditions. Archaeological evidence from sites like Perun near Novgorod reveals how ancient Slavic sacred sites were often repurposed as Christian places of worship, physically embodying this religious transition. The legacy of these ancient beliefs continues to influence modern Slavic identity. Contemporary celebrations like Kupala Night preserve age-old traditions while mythological motifs inspire current artistic expressions. The themes of life cycles, once personified by deities, still resonate in cultural practices, connecting people to natural rhythms and shared human experiences. This enduring impact demonstrates how old Slavic mythology continues to shape cultural identity and creative endeavors across generations, from literature to modern pagan revivals. The resurgence of interest in Slavic mythology has led to the establishment of cultural centers dedicated to preserving and studying these ancient traditions. In Poland, the term Rodzimowierstwo refers to modern Slavic native faith movements, linguistically connecting contemporary practices to ancient beliefs. These modern interpretations often blend historical research with contemporary spiritual practices, creating a living tradition that continues to evolve while maintaining links to its ancient roots. The Russian concept of Rodnia Vera similarly reflects this modern revival of ancient Slavic spiritual traditions. 